Chambers Group wanted to see a school just starting to come to grips with change so that they could talk to people about how they felt about change itself. They started by looking at a school, following the school as organization or OD approach. Mashase Primary in Attridgeville, Pretoria, has been governed in the traditional authoritarian way for more than 20 years. Recently, after seeing the successes of other schools in Attridgeville who are using the school as organization approach, they decided that they wanted to become a more participatory school. It hasn't been easy for Mr. Mnisi, the principal, to adapt to the change. Timber's group wanted to know how he managed. Could you please help us, you know, get a feel of where the school is at the moment in terms of its organization, management and leadership? In the beginning, I am from the old school. In the beginning, I was so imperious and domineering. I wanted everything which I said to be taken there and then. Nobody, all was mine to say this and nobody was to question me. But now, after having attended this course with Alex, the outraged people, I, in fact, I started with resisting. Why do you think you had to resist? As I've been a, a, a school headmaster for more than 10 years, and always giving instructions to my subordinates, they didn't have any say. And they never used to say, no, Menier, we can't do this now. We'll do this this way. Or please, that is not the correct way of doing things. Please, let's do it this way. No. They used to go away and in their caucuses say, but Munisi, Munisi is an mm. autocrat. <laughs> yes. But they never told me. And at the end of the day, I wanted my job mm. to be done the way I wanted it, even if they didn't like how I wanted them to do things. Mm. Uh, and actually, I thought maybe they are going to take over the running of the school all together. And I, I, they will, this time, instruct me how to do things in, you see, that was the problem. But now that I see, if I come to them in a very polite way and ask them to give me, in fact, to give their inputs in the way how we can do or enter into a certain field of running things, they give me inputs. And at the end of the day, I realize my way of doing things was wrong. Mm -hmm. And they come with better ideas. And then we put the ideas together and then take the one which will. There's an argument uh, that when you involve your teachers in decision making of your school, um, there's a tendency for their morale to be boosted one way or another. Have you basically managed to see any change in, in, in the morale of your teachers? Even I can read from their faces that these people, most of them, are happy people now and they used not to be happy in the past. Mr. Mnisi gave the group new insight into how school principals are thinking. I could identify with the sorts of things he was saying, the kinds of tensions that he has had to go through. And in fact, for once, it gave me a clear understanding of where the principals I've been working with are. But it needs a brave man like Mr. Mnisi and also a patient and understanding staff as well, and a very hardworking team to support, to understand, as well as to help the principal and the management structure towards the movement to new forms of democratic leadership, management, and organization. This teacher team from Matlase are busy with OD planning. Alex Hassett, a field worker from St. Mary's Outreach Project, is helping them set goals for the year. Timber's team spoke to Alex to get a clearer picture of his role in the change process. In terms of school development planning, what it really entails is for the school community really to look at what the present realities are, what are the kinds of forces that are impacting on the school, and how that relates to what the present needs are at the school. Then to obviously prioritize those needs, because most of the schools we work with have hundreds of needs. Once we've prioritized those, um, then to work through a process of actual action planning, um, focusing specifically on a one-year period. The actual development plan is for a three-year period, but then we look at specific action planning for 
the year that we're working with. And there it's down to the nitty gritty. I mean, who's doing what, um, the when and the how at the school. Yeah. Alex, to what extent does the whole of this process depend on there being an outsider, if you like, an external change agent who comes in to assist and support the school or lead the school through the process of change? Um, ideally, it would be very nice if schools were just taking on um, that role themselves. And with some of the schools we work with, people have been um, taking on the change role. And then we've really just provided much more of a support function than an actually initiating function. But I think, for me, the realities are that often it doesn't happen. And so um, you have some schools that seem to be fairly stuck. So our role, I would see, is initiating a process but then to actually see your goal as this being something that the school can sustain itself. We actually work on setting indicators with um, the people we're working with, because one of the things we're trying to get schools to do is actually track their own progress. The process Alex is going through with these teachers is not something he came up with himself. It follows the four steps of organizational development to the letter. In OD planning, people first look at the strengths and weaknesses of the organization asking the question, where is the school now? Then they draw up a school vision or mission statement where they decide jointly where they want to be. Next, they draw up a plan and prioritize their needs. And lastly, they decide on indicators to help them assess if they have reached their goals. The tools that have been developed in organizational theory are quite useful, organizational development. Oh, they're, they're useful tools. And they shouldn't be seen as an end in themselves. So, for example, to get a staff together to think about what the school's purpose is and to develop a mission statement is not a bad thing because it brings people together and gets them talking but, and produces a mission statement. The important thing isn't the mission statement. The important thing is that you're getting people talking. OD planning encourages organizations to use outside facilitators who will bring fresh perspectives to the organization. You will have noticed in the discussion or the interview with Alex that there is actually a very fine line between the success of an internal facilitator or an external facilitator. In this case, you will notice that Alex is an external facilitator of the change process within the school. Now, there are times in which you as the facilitator need to be very clear of the limitations of whichever role you are playing. An internal facilitator will be good at certain stages, like they will know the context of the school, they will know all the staff room talk within the school, they will know who is easy to work with, who is not easy to work with, but an external facilitator may take a long time trying to find out all of that. However, the internal facilitator also has problems. For example, he has been here for all the time, or she has been here for all the time, and people start asking, not this one who has been doing ABC to be turning around and telling us all these things. Through the workshops facilitated by Alex, the school has managed to make decision making on staff issues much more participative. I think it is more democratic now because uh, every teacher is free to express his own views and her own views. And you know, we are, we are so happy, we are just like one family. And uh, if you are wrong, if the principal is wrong, you are able to say to him, no, but excuse me, sir, I, I, I beg to disagree, but you have to give him the facts why you disagree. But this does not mean that teachers should now spend all their time in meetings. Teachers have to be a professional in their own classrooms. It's no good being on your school management committee as a second year teacher, and there's nonsense going on in your classroom that every opportunity you can have to get out of the classroom, you take it. Although they have managed to pull in the staff in this process, Matlase Primary is still very much at the beginning stages of change and is still struggling to involve parents and set up structures in the school. Masizane Primary, just down the road from Matlase, has been following the school as organization approach for the past three years, also using Alex Hassett as a facilitator. Alex was more involved in the beginning stages, and Masizane soon established their own structures and procedures based on the school's mission statement or vision. In the vision building, well, everybody was eager 
to, to get on board. That is where the other teachers, we were all involved in the vision building. And then thereafter, we started the development team. Through careful planning and consultation, the development team managed to catalyze a process of involving staff and parents in school structures. I think one of the key things that teachers need to do if they want to change their school, improve their school, is to have a plan, to have a vision of what they want to do. Um, that's the key thing. The other thing is I think it's got to be related to the main activity of the school, which is really teaching and learning. And so if you've got those two components, I think you can begin to change a school. Most of the parents at Masizane come from a nearby informal settlement and are poor and uneducated. But this does not stop them from getting involved. Although many people believe that a school can only be successful if it is well resourced, schools like Masizane continue to prove them wrong. There is growing evidence that the initiative of the teachers and parents and the ethos or culture of the school are more important than the resources. Through a joint commitment to the children's education, the staff and parents set up projects and structures like a parent-teacher learning club. They managed to persuade an organization to donate books to the school and trained a teacher to work with parents and show them how to help their children read at home. Another teacher was trained to counsel abused children and their parents, which is prevalent in this poverty-stricken community. They also set up a fundraising committee which managed to buy the school a fax machine. Temba wanted to know what it was that helped the development team to mobilize everybody associated with the school. What was their secret? Where did they draw their strength from? We attended so many courses. They taught us to prioritize our things. What is the most important thing that we can implement at our school? In my site, as I am part of the, the fundraising committee, they have helped us a lot in this, where we can go and ask these uh, donations. And after that, they taught us how to manage the funds that we get from companies from, local, from our local shops here and from everybody who is willing to donate something for us. But besides the skills they acquired from attending workshops, what really made a difference in the development team was the individual commitment of the teachers involved. You know, change is not a simple thing. It's very stressful. And as a person, you know, the influence comes from you as a person first. Then when it works for you as a person, then you can, you know, dish it out to other people. And at the end of the day, to us here at school, as teachers, you know, it, it makes us to feel fulfilled and to be, you know, as worthwhile people. The group was curious as to how relations between teachers and the principal would be after the experience at Matlatle. They spoke to Mrs. Banyene, the principal, and Mr. Ngobeni, the chair of the governing body, to get a better understanding of how these structures relate to one another. Ma'am, could one actually get a clarity here as to to what extent the setting into place of the development committee stabilized or actually shook the power base, if you like, the authority uh, of the management team of the school. The development team doesn't shake the management council of the school in the sense that the development team give feedbacks to the management council of the school. Whatever they do, they come and report back to the governing council or to the principal. There's also been an argument that in order to have a functioning development committee, you need the management to change from, say, autocratic types of leadership to a democratic kind of leadership. Have you experienced that? We believe in collective bargaining, collective uh, doing of things as a team. Um, the, the, the development team of the school is working hand in hand with the school principal, is working hand in hand with the school governing body, where we believe together we can achieve. Tandile was impressed with how, at this school, they have managed to overcome structural conflict. There's always that tension between those in, in management and the rest of the staff. And apparently, the new ways of managing your school now do, in a way, assist us to bridge that gap. Because now the managers and the rest of the staff 
can actually work together. So it means that the school has to work almost like a symphony concert, and the principal might be the conductor and animating the, the school, but everyone has got an important role to play in that school. At Masizane, the change process was initiated by the teachers in the school, as normally happens in the school as organization approach. However, teachers realized the importance of drawing in parents as well. The parents now work hand in hand with the teachers. <laughs> principal and then